In this Tamir F812 build, you don't need to start painting until stage 29. Or do you? Hello YouTubers, Colin here with Tamiya Truck Building Special on painting. Let's be honest, you bought your lovely kit and want to get cracking. It's very tempting to just build until you come across a part that needs painting. Then what? All stop. Or well, you might not bother to paint at all, but that would be a shame. Painting is a time consuming and lengthy process and your build may come to grinding halt while you prep parts and spray them. That's assuming, of course, you've already bought the paint. Me, I prefer to plan ahead. I'm no expert, but in these episodes I'm going to explain what I do and hopefully pass on some tips at the same time. So what do I do? Well, I look at the painting aspect from start of build. Here's a quick overview. I said earlier I estimate how much paint I need. This is far from an exact science and doesn't always work, but it does give you an indication of how much paint to get in the first place. The stuff isn't cheap and you do need to try and gauge how much to buy. Using a simple counting method I go through the manual and note down the colour code and mark a one for every small amount of paint required. If it's a medium sized part I'll mark two. If it's a large item, I'll mark three and so on. At the end, you'll see which colours crop up the most and how much paint you need. As you can see, there isn't a huge amount of painting on the FH12, but you can see which colours I need and get a rough idea of how much paint you need. Paint codes. These are quoted in the manual for the Tamiya brush and spray paints. X and XF prefixes are brush paints. TS is spray. Usually the paint codes for your model are shown in the front of the manual. If they aren't, or you want to see what other colours are available, you can download the Tamiya colour charts. Unfortunately, I find Tamiya spray cans are not good value for money and therefore tend to use Halford's car colours. For example, most Tamiya spray cans can cost around £6 for a 150ml can, which is £4 per 100ml. Halford's car colours cost around £8 per can, but they are 400ml, which works out to half the price of the Tamiya paints. Your choice, people. Oh, and the primer from Halford's is £7 for a 400ml can, so that's even cheaper. You can use other makes, of course, like I have with the Cobalt Blue. Just be sure it is acrylic paint suitable for plastics and test the new product on a spare piece of plastic first to ensure colour fastness and no reaction. Now you have your paint, you can spread out the painting alongside the rest of the build. Doing it this way eases the temptation to rush the painting just to fit the parts. Again, I've learnt the hard way. Experience has taught me to have patience and follow the routine. If you rush at it, you'll be sorry. Whilst you can spray direct top coat onto plastic, I don't advise it. I find a primer undercoat prepares the surface for your top coat. If you follow these simple rules, 
your paint will go on well. How are you going to paint them? What? I hear you say. Well, I mean, are you going to paint them on the sprues or cut off individual parts? It can be tempting to spray items on the sprue, but what if not all parts are going to be the same colour? And where the item attaches to the sprue, you've got to cut that off after painting, which is going to leave a bare plastic part which will need touching in. Personally, I paint items individually off the sprues. Here's a Colin tip. Have you got any of that expanding foam lying around anywhere? You know, like my super duper tool station. I had a load come with a new washing machine a few years ago that I kept. Cut to length and width, they make great mounts for your parts to be sprayed on. Just use cocktail sticks to support the parts and you will be able to spray the item much more easily. Another tip, get yourself a puffer brush and give the parts a blast to get rid of any bits just before you spray. And if it's a complex shape, do the underside first, let it cure and then do the top side. Last but not least, and this is optional, you could cover the parts with a lacquer coat. Sometimes I do and sometimes not. It's not essential, so I'll leave that one for you to ponder. In the case of the cobalt blue, it's a matte finish, so I will be putting a gloss on it or a lacquer. Masking and multi-layered spraying. From the outset you'll most likely need to do some masking. You could just spray all one colour or go for a two-tone effect. This is more for the experienced modeler to be honest. Here's a Colin tip. If you want a two-tone look, consider some wider homemade decals to give a similar look. For multi-layered paint you need to mask off and spray one colour first leave it to cure for about a week 
before masking on the new paint close to the edge line. This may seem like a long time, but if your paint hasn't fully cured, the masking tape will damage it. Mask off the new paint and spray the second colour. A slow process, but the results can look very good. Masking tape. Masking tape is masking tape, right? Nope. Be careful. Don't use cheap tape or tapes with high adhesion. The best tapes are labelled low tack for a reason. They don't pull the paint off when you remove the mask or leave a sticky residue. Masking curves can be challenging even for the experienced modeler. Take a look at these wheel arches. The panels were painted white all over, then the arches masked off and sprayed semi-gloss black. If you use paper masking tape, there's always the chance the paint may bleed under the tape where you've had to inevitably crease it slightly to get around a curve. Problem solved. Use plastic flexible masking tape. I used it on these arches without any bleed at all. By now you will have seen I have painted but not lacquered my FH12 parts. It all went well except for one side of the cab. Remember the video where the cab corner fell down while I was painting and I swore under my mask? Well, the paint did run. This is frustrating but don't panic. Avoid the temptation to try some harsh corrective measures like rubbing off the paint while it's still wet or soft. My tip, let it dry and harden for 24 hours, then carefully use sanding sticks to flat the run, then repaint. End of problem. Well that's it for this topic YouTubers. I hope you found it interesting and maybe taken something out of it for your own modelling. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Until next time, bye for now.